This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. The final part of the chapter is going to go through and look at sale and leaseback and the accounting for a sale and leaseback transaction. You would have already come across sale and leaseback transactions in F9 as, as a way of raising finance because if you have a, a valuable non-current asset, you can sell it to raise the finance but if it's an asset that you still need to use within your business if you've sold it how are you going to carry on using it leasing it back that's the way isn't it okay so you sell it you raise the funds and then you lease it back okay so the key is how do we account for it when it is a sale and operating lease back or when it is a sale and finance lease back because the accounting treatment is going to be ever so slightly different, isn't it? OK, so if we go through and think about sales and lease back, it all comes down to, to the economic substance and the economic substance of whether or not it's an operating or a finance lease. So if we think about the first one, uh, which is a sale and operating lease back, what happens under a sale and operating lease back is that when you sell the asset, it's gone. And when you lease it back under an operating lease, you don't have the risks and rewards of ownership, do you? So therefore, once it's sold and gone under the, the, the operating lease, in substance, it, it's still no longer your asset, is it? So therefore, what's going to go through and happen is that the legal form and the economic substance are exactly the same, aren't they? The fact that you have a sale. Uh, well, the sales happened and then that you lease it back just under a normal lease rental agreement, isn't it? So if that's the case, what's going to go through and happen there is that to account for a sale and lease back, you record the sale. So de-recognize the asset and record a profit or loss on disposal. However, what you just need to be careful of then is you need to compare the proceeds, the fair value of the asset that's been sold because you might have to make subtle adjustments within your accounts if the sale is above or below the fair value of the assets. OK, uh, so uh, keep it there under sale and operating lease back is that you're going to recognize a profit or loss on disposal because the asset has been sold. Uh, and then when you lease it back, you just treat it as a normal operating lease. So lease rental straight line over the lease period. Uh, and the other consideration is that when you have the sale, you need to give consideration to, to the cash proceeds you receive and the actual fair value of the asset. But we'll see that when we come to the example. OK, uh, the other situation is a sale and finance lease back, which is obviously going to be different to a sale and operating lease back. Because under a sale and finance lease back, when you've sold it, the asset's gone. But when you lease it back under a finance lease, the key bit there is that a finance lease confers ownership isn't that you know when we went through and mentioned a sale and operating lease back under an operating lease when you lease it back there is no ownership is there but under a sale and finance lease back you've sold it so the asset goes but when you lease it back you have the risks and rewards of ownership so the asset comes back in isn't it okay so we need to go through there and account for the sale ever so slightly differently because the asset doesn't in substance leave our hands does it legally it does go and then we come back and bring it on but we're going to treat it as if it's never left okay so all we go through and do that is that as the asset is still ours we go through and reclassify it from own to lease so it's still there as ppe we still depreciate it but however it is just going from own to lease so you need to make a separate disclosure in the notes to the accounts that says look this asset is now leased and not owned okay uh, and then what you have is that the proceeds that you get, uh, you debit the bank and that is recognised as just a, a long term loan. OK, so you debit the bank and credit your loan. And then as you go through and make the lease payments, you credit the bank, debit the loan and go through there and charge interest on the outstanding balances, don't we? OK, that's it. OK, now nothing else to it okay that is the accounting treatment however when it comes to is it your sale and operating lease back as we mentioned before you do just need to be a little bit careful don't we okay so let's go through and, and have a look at the example have a little bit of a play around with it and see what we mean okay uh so i think we've had pears and cherries i think we're now on to apples aren't we uh so sticking with the theme of fruits 
Uh, it says advise Apple on how to account for the sale and lease back in its financial statement. So SFP profit or loss. Uh, if the office building were to be sold at the following prices. So here what you have under each of these situations. Is that you have your proceeds. These are your sales proceeds. Uh, what have we got? Is it an operating lease or a finance lease? Well, it says at the start of the question, Apple requires funds to finance a new ambitious rebranding exercise. Uh, its only possible way of raising finance is through a sale and operating lease back of its head office building for a period of 10 years. Uh, so there, if you have a sale and operating lease back, uh, we have disposed of the assets. So you get a profit or loss on disposal. You record the operating lease rental straight line over that 10 year period. The issue there is that when you're looking at the profit or loss on disposal, you need to compare the proceeds to the fair value. OK, uh, so it says there the current fair value of the building is 10 million and the carrying value is there's 8.4 billion dollars. OK, uh, so let's go through and, and have a look at the different scenarios. Uh, scenario number one is whereby your proceeds are equal to 10 million and that is the same as the fair value isn't it because if you go back to the question the fair value is 10 million which is the same as the proceeds if that's the case it's very 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 straightforward you do recognize the asset you get a profit on disposal of 10 million less the carrying value at 8.4 gives me 1.6 million dollars again don't forget to say that we de-recognize the asset but you recognize a profit immediately in profit or loss of is it the 1.6 million dollars okay nice and simple you don't do anything clever or funny about it okay if the proceeds are at fair value, just recognise a profit or loss on disposal. Nice and straightforward. Uh, in scenario number two, uh, what have we got there? Well, in scenario number two, the proceeds are $12 million. So the proceeds are $12 million, which is greater than the fair value. So that's where we need to just be a little bit clever. OK, because the sale should be at fair value, shouldn't it? It's not. We still do recognize the asset uh, as we've sold the asset. It comes back as an operating lease. So therefore, there is no ownership is there? we don't have the risks and rewards of ownership. But what we need to do is we need to recognize a profit and we recognize a profit up to fair value. OK, so that's the same as in the first example. We take the ten million dollars less is it the 8.4 million so you have a 1.6 million dollar profit immediately on the statement of profit or loss okay what do we do with the excess okay the, the excess amount of money that we've received because we've received 12 million and the fair value is to sorry sorry 10 million isn't it so the excess amount of cash that we receive is $2 million. So effectively, what we've done in substance, we've just borrowed a little bit more, haven't we? OK, so what we've got there is that we have a loan and a loan is there. Is it for the excess proceeds above fair value? Which is the 12 million compared to the 10 million. Which gives me $2 million. OK. Uh, and that's just treated as a loan on, is it the, the statement of financial position? OK, uh, if you like journal entries, which I know you do, uh, you're going to have to debit the bank. Is it the with the full 12 million? Because that's the amount of cash we receive. We credit the property, plant and equipment. Is that the with the eight? Point four million. I credit my profit on disposal with that at one point six million, and 
and then you credit a loan, isn't it, there with the two million? Okay, excellent. Uh, do just be very, 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 very careful, however, maybe going just a little bit too far. But then don't forget with your annual lease rentals, you do then need to credit the bank. And what you will go through and do that is one portion of the rental will go to the loan and the other will go to your profit or loss as your operating lease expense. Okay. Uh, how do you know what goes as an operating lease expense? How do you know what goes to the loan? Uh, well, the operating lease expense is based upon your normal market rental. So you'd be given that within the question. What would be the standard amount that you would pay for an operating lease of this type? And then the amount that goes to the loan it is just a balancing figure. OK, uh, so that begins to reduce the loan. Uh, down from the two million down to zero over however many years I think it was there was it as 10 years so that's the quite the complicated one I think uh, because you, you've got to work out a profit on disposal uh, but that profit on disposal be careful is to fair value you then need to deal with the excess proceeds above fair value which, which is there as a loan and then the final piece within the jigsaw is that the rental payments need to be split and allocated not just as a lease rental expense, but also allocated to the loan. And the way in which we do that is that the lease rentals are based upon market rates. And then what goes to the loan is just simply a balancing figure. The difference between the cash payment we make and what we've recognised as a lease rental in profit or loss. Uh, we then have the third scenario. So scenario number three. Uh, scenario number three is whereby the proceeds are equal to, is it $9.6 million? So the $9.6 million is less than fair value. Okay. Uh, so if that's the case, uh, again, I think you've still made, is it a profit? So the profit is based on the $9.6 million less is it i think it was the 8.4 million which gives me a profit is it of 1.2 million which goes immediately to the statement of profit or loss so if you make a profit when the sales are below fair value just recognize a profit as normal okay so uh, there is nothing too substantial about that there okay however just be careful if we go through and look at scenario number four uh, in scenario number four, the proceeds that we have there are eight million. Again, those proceeds are still less than fair value. So you're going to recognize a profit or loss as normal. However, just be careful. What you have here is that your loss is that you're now making. So eight million less is it 8.4 million gives me a loss is it of 0.4 million now what you can do is you can recognize that loss immediately in profit or loss uh, however what you have as an alternative treatment is what you could do is alternatively you are allowed to defer the loss over the lease but you can only do that if it's compensated by future below market rentals so your rentals in the future need to be below the market rates okay if that's the case you're allowed to defer that loss and there is a reason for it uh, and the reason behind it is that you've received a lot less cash haven't you than what you should you should have received at least the fair value and you haven't 
Uh, but to compensate the fact that you've received less cash, what's going to happen is that you're going to pay less cash back on the lease agreements. OK, you know, if you got more cash in the future or sorry, if you got more cash from the sale, uh, you would likely generate a profit and you'd have to pay the normal market rentals. But you've got a little bit less cash and because you've got less cash, you've been compensated by paying lower rentals into the future. So to more accurately reflect the substance. Uh, and the substance should be that we recognise market rentals within our financial statements to show a, a faithful representation of what is happening in economic reality. What we have is we have a lower lease rental. But what we do is if we defer that loss, that loss gets released, doesn't it, over the lease period, which should then hopefully mean that the lease rental that we're paying and that extra incremental bit of loss that is released brings it closer to your market rentals that are then expensed in profit or loss okay so if you make a loss you recognize it immediately unless if you want you can defer that loss provided that your future rentals are below market rates if they are defer that loss recognize the rentals as you pay them as standard over the life of the lease but they will be increased ever so slightly as you release that loss over the life of the lease and begin to increase it to bring it closer and more in line and more reflective if you like of what we would expect to be the market rentals okay so of those scenarios i think numbers one and three but were pretty straightforward uh, of the others, I think, was it number two and number four? They were quite tricky. So number two was whereby we sold it above the fair value. Uh, and then the fourth one was whereby we sold it at below fair value. And when we sold it at below fair value, it gave rise to a loss. And if we have a loss, we have the option to defer that loss if the future market rentals or our future lease rentals are below market value. OK, so if you to work through that example again, I would highly recommend that you work through the second and the fourth one and then go through and have a play around uh, with a couple of the examples that you have within whatever study text it is that you're using. Uh, and if you're happy with that, I don't think you're going to go too far wrong because that example there has been adapted from past exam paper questions. So that's very much exam standard. So that's it for leases for the time being. Uh, and I will see you all when we come to the next section. Uh, we shall allow you plenty of time to practice your lease questions before you get there. Other than that, take care and I'll see you all soon.